In this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to properly set up a scene in SketchUp and V-Ray. It's such an important step that can literally make or break your image. When a proper scene is chosen, it enhances your image and aspect ratios also play a major role in this. So let's talk about all of that. This video has also some photographer's references and some other tips. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Oliver from Upstairs, a platform dedicated to learn architectural representation and visualization. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So this video is sponsored by Skillshare. More about this amazing online learning community at the end of this video. Stay tuned. All right, so creating scenes is a crucial step in visualizing a project. It's definitely worthless if you design a beautiful place model everything perfectly, and then when the part where you actually get to show people what you've done, you do a poor job at creating the scenes and the images end up not showing the atmosphere you expected. There are many points that you should consider to create great images, to create great compositions after all. In the video description or in the video cards, there will be two videos where I talk a bit more about what it takes to improve an image. You should check them out if you haven't already. For this video, let's focus on the process of creating a scene. I'm not gonna go into the specifics and tell which angle you should point your camera at, that is totally up to you, because you're the one that knows your design, knows the space you created. This is something you learn with time and looking at good references, especially from architectural photographers. I suggest frequently looking at architectural photos, you can go on ArcDaily and see a bunch of curated projects, definitely a good start. But better than that is you go after photographers. A suggestion is to study how they took the photo, you study the lines, the camera placement, how he or she works with depth, lighting. All of that will help you create better images, will help you during the scene creation, rendering, and post-production. I have picked three photographers from Brazil that have outstanding work, and I'm going to quickly share them in this video before we jump into the short tutorial. The first one is Pedro Koch, amazing sensibility, really awesome work. You can see how he beautifully plays with depth. The image proportions go a long way on framing the architecture piece. There's obviously much more to study from his work, but I'm gonna keep it short. Then Maira Akayaba, she has also powerful photos. Can you see how the architectural photos have verticals pretty much always straight up? with few intentional exceptions, of course, but it's often either framing the building flat or on the corner, not somewhat in the middle. Well, I'm not an expert in this field, but as I progress developing my skills in the visualization field, I've started to pick up some common doings from these photographers I look up to. Now, as I said, I don't want to get too deep into the references, but the last one is Eduardo Macarius. He's more focused on interior shots, Although I've seen some more recent work on exterior as well, and it's really, really good. I used to work in the same building as him, amazing photographer, definitely worth checking him out. All the info will be in the video description, so you can follow them there. And before we jump into the short tutorial, do you have any photographers that you follow? I'd love to know your thoughts on it. If you can, leave a comment down below. Alright, so I'm gonna use SketchUp, as you know, but I'm sure you can adapt the workflow for the program you use. If you are a Rhino user, you should check Archihex's YouTube channel for videos on Rhino. Now, if you've seen our video about 5 things to take your architecture images to the next level, you know that aligning verticals and horizontals make your images much more aesthetically pleasing and easier to read. There, I talked about the benefits, but never really showed you some essential steps to get the scene correctly. So, here we go, not necessarily in this order, but I usually start by setting the field of view. In SketchUp, simply press Z to access the zoom tool. You will see down there that the field of view will appear. I usually work around 45 to 60 degrees for a more realistic result. And to be honest, I will only go to 60 if I'm in an interior scene and that I really need that extra view range. Oh, and quick tip here. If you are into photography and would like to work in focal length instead of field of view, therefore in millimeters, you can type in 18 mm for your standard 18 millimeter lens or 35 and so on. Up to you. 
To go back to the grease, type in DEG after the field of view number and you will be back to the fault settings which is in the grease. Okay then, with your field of view ready, position your little guy more or less where you want your scene to be. This tool also let us choose a camera height around 170 centimeters works great. But sometimes a low camera height can be really interesting to create different moods in the final result. You just gotta type in the number with your little man selected. Be aware that the little guy should be set before actually placing him. And it sets the distance to the floor you clicked. And the eye tool sets the distance based on the axis, so keep that in mind. Now another useful tool is the walk tool, to go back and forth. It's pretty handy because it maintains the camera height. Awesome, now the next step is grabbing the eye tool and aligning the horizontals flat. And this is the case if you're framing your image flat. If you're going for a corner image, adapt this step, alright? Now, if you have something in your image to use as an align guide, just go there and match that line to the top edge of your viewport. If not, make sure to use the tape measure to create one, and then align to the guide. Do not worry with the verticals just yet, you can leave them pretty skewed if needed. Focus on the horizontals first. Alright, once they are 100% horizontal, we can go to camera and choose two point perspective. That will make our verticals totally vertical. But look, from now on, you cannot move your camera anymore, or you will mess up the view. So what I suggest is to save a scene, and if you need to position the camera a little far back, for example, I recommend going back to the little man step and set up the camera again. And a pretty awesome thing that you can do with the two point perspective, and now since your verticals and horizontals are aligned, you can grab the hand, the pen too, and better position the camera to have more floor or sky without affecting the camera height or position and without distorting the horizontals and vertical lines that we have corrected. I think for this one I might balance the space above and below the pillar. And then don't forget to update your scene after any changes. Now let's combine SketchUp and V-Ray to use the full potential of both of these programs on scene creation. As I said, there's not an exact order you should do each of these moves. Sometimes I start with the V-Ray step I'm gonna show you now, and sometimes I just work firstly with the camera and zoom tool in SketchUp. It's important to know that this might vary. From V-Ray 3 and up, we got this amazing update which allows us to place these black bars on the side to work with different dimensions other than your standard viewport aspect ratio. This is incredible, especially to create vertical renderings. It's so much easier now. You can choose from the presets V-Ray has, or go to custom and create any aspect ratio you want. But be aware that sometimes when you change the aspect ratio, your field of view will change as well. So you might need to double check that and redo some steps. We are used to seeing standard 16x9 renders, right? But did you notice how the photographers I showed you had a mix of various aspect ratios? Each one enables a different sensation to the viewer and you should learn how to take advantage of all aspect ratios. Now, just to finish up, let me tell you that I usually go back and forth with the scene creation until I get the one I want. I test the aspect ratios, then set up a scene, then fix something, go back, do it again. It's a process that isn't really linear, just as any part of visualization really. Test all the possibilities and with time and reference study, you will understand how to make your framing better. Alright, before we head out, I want to talk with you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. So Skillshare is a community for online learning that has literally thousands of inspiring classes on many creative topics. If you're feeling anxious about what we're going through, as I am, I usually try to do something creative, not related to work or school. Practice a creative skill or dive deep into a new subject. Skillshare has classes in many fields, so whether you want to improve in graphic design, video making, writing, photography or even business, they have classes for all of that and much more. And there's one specific class I would like to suggest you, which is about painting. It's called Postcards from Here. 
Playing with Ink by Dylan Mirzwinski. She teaches about using ink differently from what we're used to. It's great to have a different view of art and illustration so that we can apply new techniques in architectural images. She also emphasizes a lot on how important it is to have personality and identity in a drawing. I agree 100% with that. Amazing class. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. And it's less than 10 bucks a month if you sign up for the annual subscription. Well, but since we are partnering up, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 2 months for free of premium membership, so that you can try it out and see if it's for you. I highly recommend taking a look. Thanks Skillshare for being a supporter of this channel and sponsoring this video. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. If so, make sure to give this video a like and share with your architectural friends. Oh, and if you're wondering what has happened to old graphics, we have changed the identity to upstairs. In the video description, there will be a video that talks about this change. And also, we've been really consistent on Instagram. If you don't follow us there, make sure to check at LearnUpstairs. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!